Okay, well, uh, the story here is I was uh, scratching my head to try and um, think of some other talks that weren't just about megaliths, and I know we've got an interest in, in holy wells, and with, with Derbyshire being the, the home of well dressing, I was um, scratching my head to, to, to think of um, someone I could invite. Now, uh, Rose happened to, to contact us about going on John Barnett's walk, and as she was local, I thought, in my head, I thought, oh, she might know, so I thought, um, do you happen to know that well dressing by any chance? And by miracle of miracles, she, she will tell you about it. So, uh, and she, she's um, scanned these in from, from Prick, from old photos, and prepared this talk especially for, for us today. So I'm very grateful to, to, to Rose. Rose Welsh. She lives in the village of, of Wensley, and will, will tell you about other things that she's done, done just now. So thank you, Rose. Thank you very much. Um, Good day to everybody. It's nice to see you all here today. Oh, I'm supposed to stand here, is that right? I'll stay here then. <laughs> OK. Uh, well dressing is particular to Derbyshire, although it does occur in other areas around British Isles. Um, but I specifically want to talk about well dressing in Derbyshire. Um, I do have... Um, some experience of it because I worked with Rosalie children. Rosalie is a village uh, down near the Derwent uh, by Darleydale. Um, and I worked with children on the children's well and the pictures around that I've, I've placed near the fireplace and uh, over on the table show you the sorts of things that we did. But obviously they were not particularly to the standard of Tissington and Yulegrave well dressings, which are particularly renowned in this area. But I'd like to start, first of all, uh, with Tissington. Tissington, this is a Tissington well, and it is in fact the Hall well, which is right opposite Tissington Hall. This is Tissington Hall in the middle of Tissington village. Um, it's a Jacobean hall um, and well dressing began in Tissington and other villages in Derbyshire then copied the idea. This is how the story goes. I'm going to talk to you about how it began a little bit later on because there are two actual traditions, okay? Um, That's the village and the pond. And you can see a lot of water actually collects in the middle in the pond. And later on, um, if you are, if you have any, uh, if you're skeptical about traditions and religions, then I've got a place for you in this talk as well. Uh, because obviously the, the, the way the land lies. Okay, if I can get on to the folklore now. So Tissington was where the well dressings began in Derbyshire Peak District and other villages copied them. But the veneration of wells goes on, uh, sorry, goes back, whoops. The veneration of wells goes back a long time. Um, this, this, uh, these two uh, handsome chaps here are standing next to the hall well, which was, if I can just go back <coughs> to that one, sorry about this, that's the hall well, but in front of it the well does spring up and it runs down the road in stream, really, and springs up at the well. Here you can see, I have some more technology here that I'm not used to, here you can see how the well springs there and comes down to the road there. All the water gathers in the village. But when it's dry, because Tissington is on limestone, the water might go away. And this happens in a lot of the, the White Peak area. The White Peak and the Dark Peak are two completely different rock stratas, um, etc. Here we're in Birchover, and I'm, I'm sure, pretty certain Birchover is on shale and gritstone. But over the valley where I live at Wensley, we're on limestone there. And the water disappears quite quickly. Okay? And 
Because the water is so precious, when it does well up from the ground, obviously it's very, very important. And it was very important to ancient people. And so, well, I should be over here. Can you just keep going like that if I go over there, please? <laughs> We're all familiar with J.R.R. Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. And this is a, this is a shot um, from the film and it's when Frodo and Samwise are on the way to Mordor and they actually walk through the marshes and there's a warrior laid in the marshes. Now, the tradition of well-dressing um, actually comes from a much more ancient tradition and British folklore, English folklore, Welsh, Celtic folklore, we have three sources really. We've got the Celtic side, we've got the Germanic side, which um, Tolkien drew on very much, and we also have the Christian sources, which followed on from those two. And these three sort of traditions do intermingle in this sort of um, study. And in all three traditions, the water had some sort of healing process for the people, or it was perhaps a rite of passage, or it was a place that signified another world, or the entrance to another world, or there was something beyond the water. And here, really, Tolkien typifies this, where, where you've got the, the warriors under the water, and they're not actually with the living, but they're not away. They are in the other world. This very Celtic idea. Um, the Celts also venerated other places that weren't particularly wells, but, but rivers, waterfalls. And this is St Necton's Keevan waterfall, which is in Cornwall. And this is quite a magical place. It's Christianised now, but it was obviously uh, pre-Christian. It was a pagan place where water was venerated. And it probably draws from the Celtic tradition. And in this, in this place also, you will find that people pile up little boulders of stones, perhaps just about that high, um, in the way that people clear stones in the Peak District. Somebody was talking about that um, yesterday on the walk. And just to make little cairns, really, to commemorate the water, to worship the water, really. Also, they hang ribbons and offerings and different things in the trees above the water. And if anybody came on the Stanton Walk um, tour guide by, by Guy last night, you'll notice near the nine stones, the, the ladies, the nine ladies I should say, um, there were lots of offerings in the tree that people had left to remember the old gods. So this happens all over the place and this certainly happens at, in this particular place where the water is venerated. So that's St Necton's uh, Keep and Waterfall. Another magical holy well that I found once was in Anglesey. And this was uh, quite a place. Um, it had a tremendous atmosphere. And it was very close to a priory and a dovecote. Um, but obviously, this was a lot older than the Priory. Um, this was here before the Priory, before Christianity really got established. Um, and it was quite amazing. And this couple sat there for about three hours because we went around, we looked at the well, we looked at um, the Priory, we looked into the church, we walked around the village, we came back, and they hadn't moved. It was quite incredible, really. But... If you did sit with them, you didn't want to move either, so it was quite a magical place. This was a, a medieval healing well, but obviously it was earlier than that. Um, I 
and it's called St Cyril's Well and it's at Penman in Anglesey if anyone wants to go. That's on the eastern, uh, northeastern bit of Anglesey. Magical place. Oh, there's some offerings that were in um, St. Nectan's Keeve. In case you didn't know what I was talking about, I've got the pictures the wrong way around here, sorry about that. But there are the ribbons and the different braids and uh, whatever uh, hung in the trees. And in some societies, not in this country, they actually hang flowers in trees. Um, which is interesting because where there, is the, where there are trees there is water this is the connection with wells this is a local um, medieval chapel it's in Cromford Cromford's just down, down the river towards um, past Matlock and Cromford's a very interesting place um, where the river's been used for industrial purposes and all sorts of things went on down there in the Industrial Revolution. But in the middle of this um, area where cotton and textiles became very big business is this little medieval chapel, and it's called the Bridge Chapel. And behind the chapel, or the ruins of it, you can see the river... Now, when Christianity came along, the Christians didn't really forget what went before. They just adapted things. And what you'll find is that water was very, very important. It had to be crossed in any case. And so you would go to the chapel and you would make your offering to God um, and you would say your prayers and then you would cross safely over the bridge, over the river. Because we do forget these days how powerful water is and how dangerous water is. And the Derwent is quite a fast-flowing river. And probably in those days, you know, it was very important to get across it safely. So the old water gods never really went away. And, of course... It is a female deity because it's water, it's wet, and it comes from the ground. And it is the mother goddess um, that was the old religion. The religion, really, uh, everybody's religion. As people moved around and shared ideas, they noticed that the earth was fertile, and they noticed that it was only fertile if there was water. So there you have a Christianised version of sacred water and worshipping the water just down the road, just past the church at Cromford. Do go and have a look if you're still around later today. It's really interesting. It's down by Cromford Meadows. If there are any locals here who want to know where that is. So when Christianity gradually was introduced into uh, the religion of, the, of the, the Isles, our Isles, the worship of the pagan water gods was actually forbidden by the monks and the priests. Um, and people were told they weren't allowed to, to do this anymore. They weren't allowed to go and, and talk to the, the water goddess or the water. They weren't allowed to go and do all the little rituals, all the little things that they used to do, all the general village things that people still do today, that was out. The Christians didn't want that anymore. But the Christians had a lot of problems stopping all that. So in the end, they had to give in, and all the wells and the sacred places were actually dedicated to Christian saints. And these Christian saints were actually names, probably Celtic names originally, and we have in Buxton our own St Anne's Well, and the reason that the water's there is because if you go into your local supermarket 
Uh, you might be lucky enough to buy Buxton water there, uh, but if you go up to St Anne's Well with your empty um, bottle, you can fill it up for free. Okay, St Anne's Well is still flowing. My mum lived in Buxton for a while and she always used to go and fetch water from St Anne's Well. So St Anne's Well is also dressed in Buxton. That's an old woodcut of St Anne's Well before we look at the dressing. And you can see here that, that it's covered over with something. There was a chapel... There was a chapel built over it, but that was destroyed um, uh, during the, the Reformation when lots of things were destroyed, when somebody had some other idea about something, which is usually the case. But here it is. That's not St Anne's Well, actually. That's a very old um, picture about last century of a Worksworth well dressing and the well is actually um, honoured by having this sort of uh, shrine put over it and that's the sort of thing that would have happened in Buxton as well um, I couldn't find any other pictures of these shrines but you will be familiar with this type of thing you see this type of structure in churches um, over the bishop's chair and, and what have you. If you've been down to St Albans uh, Cathedral, you'll see the shrine over St Alban there. So it's a very, um, it's a way of dedicating and honouring what's underneath it. And St Anne's Well was so important that it had actually had a chapel there as well. There's St Anne's Well dressed. Um, the well dressings usually have a biblical theme, but they quite often, and, and more, more so these days, it's becoming more popular to have not a biblical theme, but a topical theme. Um, as I'm sure you'll be aware, we, we're at the beginning of the Olympics, and all the wells I've seen this year, well apart from the odd biblical one, have been about the Olympics. They've also been about the, the, the Queen's Jubilee and so on. And there have been one or two about the Titanic. Um, so it's always something very topical that tends to be chosen. OK, this is Tissington. Tissington Village was the first village to actually start well dressing and there are two traditions the first tradition is that in the black death um, actually in 1349 um, the village escaped the black death and nobody, nobody died in the village most villages during this period lost at least two-thirds of their population, OK? So Tissington actually did very, very well to survive. And they always said that it was because the water was pure and it ran pure and it, it, it fed the crops and the cattle didn't die, etc., etc. And the people didn't die. Everything was clean, the water flowed. It welled up and it flowed down. Okay, so they, they thought it was the water that actually saved them. Okay, I've got some pictures of the plague for you. That's a Dutch painter, Bruegel. The fear of death must have been quite uh, immense at that time. And the stench of death too. There is another tradition, and this is the drought of 1615. Okay, and the drought um, was from March to August, apparently, and there were just two slight showers. I've got a couple of things I'm just going to read you. One tradition says there was no rain fell upon the earth from the 25th day of March until the end of May. And then there was but one shower. Two more showers fell between then, 
and the 4th of August, so that the greater part of the land was burnt up, both corn and hay. And another uh, saying says it was running from the 25th of March, Lady Day, to the 4th of August. In Derbyshire and across a much wider area of Britain. Now, it's from, from my evidence that I've found, it seems more likely that Tissington began the well dressing from the drought. Because after the drought, um, a lady started to garland the wells. And this is a garland of flowers, obviously, the garlands, uh, flowers tied together. That's how they began with the well dressings, to garland them, okay? And they, they did it on Ascension Day, because Ascension Day in those days was very, very important. Um, once Ascension Day happened, everybody was on holiday, the fair would come to Tissington, and there would be a week or two of festivities, carnival, wakes, whatever you want to call it. It was, Ascension Day was the signal for holiday, really. So... Because Ascension Day was such an important time, um, this lady decided that she would honour the wells on Ascension Day. And that's why, to this day, Ascension Day, Ascension Week, Whit Week, if you like, is the week of Tissington well dressings. And that doesn't alter. Different well dressings in different villages are, in fact, at different times. And they run from May till late September. But Tissington is always on Ascension, around Ascension Day, OK? And I think that's probably more likely uh, um, reason for it beginning, because of the drought there, OK? And there we have a biblical theme. Um, this year's Tiss one of Tissington Well. I think that's Coffin Well. I mentioned earlier, if, if anyone was slightly sceptical about um, uh, water veneration, probably nobody is here, but many, many people are. Many Derbyshire people think, oh, it's the well dressings again, you know, and this sort of thing. But if you look at the, the way the land lies, this is Tissington Village here, and all these people's cars in the field, they're all parked up there. Uh, to actually go and view the wells. And you have to pay to get into the village to see the wells, unlike other villages. Um, but you see the hills both sides, and the water comes off the hills and runs down into the porous limestone and then comes up in the wells. So you can see why, uh, around the time of the plague, that the water still ran clear, because it was running down the hills. OK? And if you do ever get to Tissington, it, it's just wonderful just walking along the street where, where the water is. It, it's quite different. It's quite something. Actually, putting living things on clay was something that happened about a century later after the uh, drought of 1615. So about a century later the people started doing more elaborate ways of honouring the water goddess, the, uh, the thing that never went away, that the Christians couldn't get rid of. Okay? And here we have, not a very good picture at all, uh, um, a clay board, sorry, a wooden board or tray which is filled with clay. Now, you might think that that looks quite easy to do. It actually takes about two days to get that like that. Okay? It takes two days. And what you have to do is soften the clay and we call that puddling the clay. Some people, if they can do it near the river, because the board would normally have been soaked in the river for three to four weeks, so it's nice and wet. Okay? Um, in your grave, they do tend to puddle their clay near the river because the access is very good for that. Um, and you'll find that the men do it and they, they are actually um, puddle it with their feet like this, okay, and soften it. 
Uh, we couldn't do that at Rosalie, and lots of people can't do that. So, so what, what we would do is actually do it with our hands. And it, it is quite hard work. If anyone's ever done any potting or clay work, it is quite hard work on your hands. Um, Salt is added and water, obviously, and then it's skimmed off with a trowel or um, I can't just remember what what the uh, the plasterer's tool is called, but that's much better. Uh, a lady who helped us with, with uh, skimming the clay was very very good at that, and she used one of those plasterer's trowels. When you've done that, you just have to leave it there and let it sit a bit, okay? Then you come the next day. Ah, that's, a, that's the Titanic well at, at Rosalie, okay? Just wanted to show you that one. That's the board when it's, it's upright. So when you're working on it, obviously it's flat on a table, Okay. This is where you put the picture onto, onto the clay board. Um, over on the table, uh, on a display I've put there, there is actually part of a picture that we kept when we, we did this display for something else. And you'll, you'll notice that there's little holes around the picture. And what you do there is you get a cocktail stick and you make little dots all around every line on the picture. If you miss any of them, then you're not going to get your correct picture, obviously. So it's a little bit like making a dot-to-dot -dot book, then you take your picture off, then you've got to join the dots again. So you take your picture off, and you then get a piece of wool, black wool, and you poke it in with your cocktail stick in each dot. So it's quite a lot of work to do. Okay. There you can see um, a team of people actually putting some adding things to the well. Now when you begin to add things to the well, once you've pricked out your picture with your cocktail stick, taken off your your um, paper picture and put the wool on so you know where the lines are okay you then can put dried um, dried living things if you like onto the picture I brought one or two things here um, I've got some seeds in there and some moss Okay, well, I had some very young children one year, and we did most of the well had a lot of had moss on. It's not very colourful, but easy for children to put on. Um, um, that was a, a little bit of a mistake. Um, there, Rebecca's putting on uh, sweet corn. Okay and it swelled in the rain and the birds ate it as well <laughs> so we had to keep going back and putting up different things on um, peas swell as well quite a lot of pulses swell so you've got to be careful what you pick particularly if it's in the middle of your um, picture um, and that was Jesus holding the world I think he's over there on the fireplace um, so that wasn't our favourite well dressing because we had to keep going back to repair that so you do learn about what what you're putting on you can see i don't know whether you can see the wool on that picture can you see it very well can you see the wool the wool lines maybe not i don't know this was this was the very mossy well and we used orange peel as well um, for, put on the word well, for um, a tiger in the undergrowth. So we had a tiger in the undergrowth somewhere and we didn't know what to use that was orange. We, we couldn't find any petals really that would, would be um, dramatic enough and that the children could handle. 
so that year so we actually used orange peel as you see the kids really enjoyed it it's a very much a community sort of activity um, when you're preparing the well the petaling adding the petals is really done on the last two days if you do it before then the well isn't going to last a week and here you'll find a great favourite and here we have it the hydrangea because the hydrangea has very large petals and they're very easily um, added to the well and they cover a large area they're very good for rivers water, sky um, and whatever. So hydrangeas are a favourite and uh, during well dressing season everybody's looking for blue hydrangeas. Nobody wants pink ones. Everyone's looking for blue. So hydrangeas are the bees and ease there for the petalling. And to petal you, you really have to there is a system to how you do it, okay? You've got to start from the bottom up. So, so if the well is standing, the board is standing up, so you've got to start petaling from the bottom and add petals over the top. And if I show you this one, which is back to the Titanic, this is the Rosalie well this year, the main well, not the children's well. And if you look a bit more closely, you can see oh, you can see how the petals are laid. Okay, you see the hydrangea petals, which I was talking about. If you actually petal it that way, or if you petal it that way, in other words, if you've got a swirly picture and you petal it round the swirl, how you would if you were drawing it, your petals will fall off or they'll stick out, uh, the rain will knock them off, etc, etc. So whatever you're doing on your picture, you've got to petal this way, else it won't work. This allows the rain to run off it, okay, and it protects the clay and keeps it, well it doesn't keep it wet, but it doesn't expose it at all so it doesn't crack so early so it's very important to do the petaling a certain way and um, it's very sad when you see it done done incorrectly because you know that it's not going to last a week nowhere near a week because um, the wind will just blow it etc or the rain will once the well is completed it's usually on the Saturday in most villages because that's usually a carnival day or, or a festival day or something's happening in the village and they have the blessing of the wells on the Sunday the next morning usually done by, by the, the, the parish priest or, or the local church or whatever um, most villages have more than one well and you have a procession and each well is blessed. And this, mine are all of the children's well because that's what I was involved in. And there we are having a little service, blessing the children's well and thanking for the water. Okay. And incidentally, all the offerings that are given to the well dressings, they are to charities that people choose. That often local charities, often topical charities, etc. And the money goes to, to that. Sorry, I'm trying to get there. Then after a week of very, very hard work, um, wonderful community work as well, um, and then the celebration at the weekend when the well goes up, and then the well is viewed and visitors go and see it, offerings are given, um, then you have to take it to bits. It's so sad taking it to bits. There I am taking it to bits there, a younger version of me there, uh, pulling off all that hard work. Um, so there you go. 
the wells only last a week because they crack um, or store, we have storms and the rain batters them or, or so on. Um, and then the well board is then returned to, if in our case, to the local farmer who stored them in his barn uh, until the, the next year when he would put them in the river two to three, three to four weeks before the well dressing. So water worship hasn't gone away. It stayed. And I rather like that one. I think that was, you know, really very good. Um, this was in Pommy, Yulegrave. The locals call it Pommy. Don't ask me why. I've heard lots of stories why. Um, because of all the rain that we've had, and I thought that was a rather nice um, topical, sort of a different topical well dressing. And the other pictures are just of my pictures of the wells that I've done with the children, which I have left in the hall down there. This was the first one we did, and these are actually photographs of photographs, so they're not very good quality. Do apologise for that. My idea here was sort of King Arthur's Castle, that sort of idea. Um, and we used here, that was gravel there. This was corn, and that fell off as well. <laughs> we had to keep going, putting, putting other things on there. Lentils, oh, don't use lentils. They really do swell. They're, they're quite difficult. Uh, Parsley was very, very good. Okay, and this was bark, you know, good old fashioned wood, and that, that was quite effective for that sort of background. Um, quite a lot of petalling there, and the old friend hydrangea at the top there for the sky. Here we have the tiger, oh no we don't have the tiger, we might have the tiger in a minute, yes, there we've got the tiger of um, orange peel that I was talking about earlier and you can see that I've you, you, we've used lichen here, that this was an elephant, it's not very clear, it's not, it wasn't really very clear on the well, it wasn't a very good one, but the children were very young that year and very inexperienced, so we did very little petalling that year. You can see bark as well, parsley at the top, and so on. I'm just <coughs> conscious I've gone over time. I think you're okay. Okay. You always cheat a bit when you're doing well dressings with children. This was dyed coconut. Dyed coconut. Okay, and gravel again here, and we did the the um, human skin there with eggshells, and that worked quite well. What's the hair made of at the bottom rows? Um, I think we painted. Oh to no, you can't paint it. You've got to use um, traditional growing materials. Um, you can you can raid the. I can't remember what we did there, but it could have been sheep's wool, uh, or it could have been petalling. I really don't remember. What does it look like on the picture there? It's like hair. Hair. <laughs> well, it would have been sheep. Probably sheep's. Sure. Yeah. Yes. I think so. I can't just remember that one, sorry. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so there we've got, um, it was the year of reading, as you can see, and we've got, no, we haven't come back. Again, you can see that, that, that what we used to do uh, for the, the sides of the back, the, the side um, boards of the wells, because there was so much to cover and only a short time to do it, we would use a, 
uh, an easy material on, on the sideboards and that brought out the colours that we put on the characters there. Again, we did eggshell here. Okay. There we have Jesus holding the world with his halo there that we had to keep renewing. <laughs> And we tried to do a sort of stained glass window effect there. The kids actually didn't like this one. Out of all the ones I did with them, they didn't like this one. And I don't really know why. It was perhaps they didn't like Jesus. I wasn't sure. The last well dressing that I did with the children was, was really to celebrate the, the, the uh, discovery of the human genome. And we were quite proud of that because we got the, the DNA... Um, ribbon there you go. on the sides as you can see there thank you um, and we used parsley as the background there which is very easy for the children to push in okay and we've got the genome and we've got sort of human baby in the womb type idea there with eggshell okay so that was eggshell and that was the final well that I did with the children. And you'll see round the outside there, you've got the good old friend, Blue Hydrangea. Okay. And the dark background there would be lichen. Lichen is um, quite difficult to find in some areas. I was looking for some yesterday afternoon, and Peter said that actually you found some... Um, on the walk we went on and I should have you know, had my eyes open last night because I, I was going to bring some in to show you but I couldn't find any alive, live lichen um, on my walls at the farm it, it, was, it had all gone yellow and, and uh, died but uh, lichen is a very good cover and sticks very nicely into the clay so water worship hasn't gone away Water worship is still with us. Water is very important to, to everybody. And I just wanted to share my knowledge about well dressing with you. I've been a little bit nervous. I've got better as I've gone along. So thank you very much for listening. I've, I've thoroughly enjoyed it. chatting with one of the local farmers and they've got a rocking stone, a Logan stone, which they'd uh, be happy to show people. So it's, like, it's just down the road. So if you want to meet here at three o'clock with, with Sen, which is there's a chap with a sort of khaki style and um, waistcoat on, and that, uh, you can go down there with him.